Paul, what's preventing this team from reaching its best form, do you think? Yeah, the opposition, us. So us Saturday, but the, the other ones, the, the opposition, we have to take into account how they perform. Luton are probably delighted with how they played at the weekend, but we can't look at that. Like I said, we certainly didn't produce the intensity that, that we normally play with and we weren't as positive as we normally are. But that's a simple one for us. It's, I think the more you watch the game back and watch the clips back, it, it's so, so evident. Um, <clears throat> Listen, lots of other games, and uh, we could have, should have, easily every result could have gone a different way, whether that's been the winning or the losing, easily. That, that's how tight the league is. Um, but we think we can get a bit more control than that over games and we, and we want to have, so yeah, we'll, we think it's the focus on us, um, the intensity at which we play, the bravery in which we play. And, and, we, and we take risks and we want to play on the front foot. And, and when we do do that, hopefully the result goes our way, like I said. But I can be less critical if, if it doesn't when we perform that way. What has stopped the players maybe taking some more risks in some of these games recently? I think we have done in the others. We just haven't... Listen, if you look back at, like I said, chances created, big chances. We're the highest in the league by a million miles. But we're also the highest in the league at missed big chances. And that tells a story. So if you're looking at a team that, that creates opportunities and we're that team, but we haven't been the team that's taken the most. You know, I'd love to be top of big chances created, certainly by the margin we are, but I'd also love to be at the bottom of big chances missed, you know, and, and then we'd be flying. So that's a, that's a big thing for us, because goals change games. Um, and, and that's it, it's, a, it's as simple as that for us. We know when we've performed, we create opportunities generally more than we're playing against, and that's continued. But we've not been taking them. Um, so if you're looking for like that fluid, open football, or where you're in real control of games, that comes with goals. Whenever there's a goal in it, there's always going to be tension because everyone's scrapping for points. Have you had to balance out a want to play on the front foot and to have a go at teams versus trying to find that control. You know, you think a few games ago you conceded six in two, but then you, you sort of re-established some control in the Watford game. Has that been something you've had no, to toy no, with? No, I think the only game we've really uh, changed the approach slightly was Watford. Um, the rest of the time we've not. We've been, like I look at Blackburn and how expansive we were first half and, and open we were, um, but we didn't score. We would have. We we wanted to create more chances. We didn't score. We're going a goal down from a counter attack in the first few minutes. So we know how the game's set up. And then we had a 20 minutes after half time where we were poor, and that that's what's cost us. Um, very similar at Reading in terms of how we passed the ball first half, but didn't open them up enough uh, in terms of getting in behind them again. I, I look at how they defend, um, but certainly the intent and and how expansive we were and how we pass the ball. It's all there. Uh, you get the goal, you get the first goal. I think there's only been two switchovers in our in our season. We went in front to Borough and lost, and then we turned one around uh, where we went behind. It slipped my head. I think they're the only two turnarounds in the league this season. It shows how important like a first goal is. And generally, when we've got it, you know, we we can open up and go on and win the game. You've spoken about the World Cup, a cup run, being where you are in the table for as long as you have been. What kind of mental challenge has that been for the players? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's the top, isn't it? It's, it's as much uh, of a challenge as you can get if you're in the mix throughout the season, in the mix in a cup competition, that's as intense as it gets. And we have to make sure we manage that and, and make sure we, uh, we're energised, um, ready to perform every day, but, but certainly when it comes game day, certainly when it comes game day, because we're speaking about how important that is for us and our performances. And, and when we've not got it, that, that one on Saturday was the first time I'm looking at him. And even when I watched it back, it, it's probably even more evident that it's far away from how we want to play. Do you worry about any men mental fatigue, especially when you've got a week like this? is a big all week, the time. isn't it? Yeah, you, listen, you worry about it all the time. We've had stages throughout this season when, when it's been visible, you know? When we, uh, when we had the 13 first team players out and it was the same players all the time and we were having to wrap them in cotton wool and we, we were actually speaking about that and just trying to roll it out and grind out results and, and at that point I thought the performances did drop a little bit but we, we won games 1-0, we kept clean sheets when we needed to. Um, so we've had it at different stages through the season. Um, I thought there was a, a fatigue to the performance in Saturday um, and we have to make sure the next 10 league games there's none. You know, We have to get back to that intensity and pick a team with energy 
um, make changes throughout the game to get us on the front foot again and, and just try and be a, that real aggressive team that, that we want to be and if we produce a performance I'm happy that's all we can ask. We always talk about a time like this then you know players maybe need a lift to get through that mental fatigue does a manager need that same lift and if so who gives you that? You get yours in the summer when you're done <laughs> get, get mine when we've, uh, when we've done um, in terms of Tommy Doyle, a lot of fans have, have been asking why we haven't seen more of him starting. How would you answer that question? Yeah, well, after the Spurs, there was no way he was going to play in the game after that. No way. He's, um, he's picked up those two calf injuries when he's had some big physical outputs and gone game, game, game. Um, so th there was no way after that. And then we thought Maka was the one for, for Reading to play in behind there. Uh, midfield a little bit more and open up and, and as it once we saw the Reading team we knew we'd pick the right one in terms of that when they played with the three centre backs and another one in midfield so sometimes I think games are horses for courses um, so whilst we still have a style of play whilst we have you know a formation that we tweak a little bit um, we tend to make most changes to the to the style that we play with, with personnel um, and that's it. A lot of people have asked, so I'm, I'm, I'm just going to ask you, is there anything in the financial agreements, the loans with Doyle and McAtee, which prevents you playing them as, as often as you would ideally like to? No, it's usually the other way. If there's any financial things, the, the, the pressure's usually on you to play them more. Do you know what I mean? So certainly not the other way. Sander Berger, how do you get him maybe playing further upfield where he can, can really hurt opponents? And Do you think that's something you want to see from him in the coming games? Yeah, he's been. He's had the license in every game to do that, so we want to do it. Like I said, the first half, um, in, in the last game at the weekend, certainly Fleck and Sander would have would have usually been with with Ollie and Illiman, but we didn't play with the same energy. Like I said, too many behind the ball, um, and, and it's something we've used really well in the past, and, and that's arguably our most aggressive attacking team. And we end up only with Ollie Norwood and sometimes one, if not two, centre backs back, and everyone else attacks. I think there was only two occasions in the first half where we got um, four or five bodies in their box and the rest ringing the box. We, the rest of the time, we, like I said, we're too safe, too slow to get forward. I credit Luton on their energy to get back behind the ball, but then it was up, up to us to break them down and, and we needed more uh, to commit more bodies into the attack, take more risks, um, because we had enough, like I said, Luton had well, I know the goal will go down as a shot on target, but it wasn't. But that's it. That's what. That's the one that they had. So in terms of the frustrations, when we're saying now uh, how unhappy we are with how we performed, uh, that's all we faced, and we lost the game one 0 So you can imagine how yeah how many weekends been. How do you reassure fans at a time like this? Because you're in a great position still. You've got a potential of you know an FA Cup semi final if you win this weekend as well. But how do you? get people through a time when you, you've had a, a couple of bad results in, in some weeks but still put that perspective out there that you're in a good position? Well, I think the perspective is and the way to look at it is if, if in July just before we kicked off someone would say we'd be in this position every single fan to a man, every, I certainly would, all the staff, the players, we would have snapped the hands off 100% and we've worked hard to get here. Especially internally, like I said, when we sort of know the situation and, and, and it's been more about cuts and spending and we would have 100% snapped everyone's hands off. So to be where we are, proud of everyone. But I think you hear me say it all the time. It's about the results. We'll be judged on that. And we've got 10 games in the league to give our absolute best. And hopefully we've got a few more in the FA Cup as well.